So this is called a nothing phone. And today we're gonna take it out, test the camera and make some photography. So this video is one I'm very intrigued about because for the last few years I've been seeing videos about this phone on YouTube, primarily on tech channels. It's hard to ignore a phone with a clear back. It's just a very unique and cool looking device if I say so myself. But this isn't a tech channel so I've never had a reason to test it out. But nothing reached out to me and they said they'd send me their Nothing Phone 1 and they gave me free reign to test the camera capabilities and make my photography with it and they're sponsoring today's video. I mean for real. How can you ignore this. So what we're going to do today is go out and test this in the streets of Atlanta. We're going to do a day of photography. It'll probably be about an hour, two hours, and I'm going to break down the entire creative process behind the photography. I'm going to do it behind the scenes, explain the shots, explain what I'm doing. At the end, I'll break down the edits, tell you my favorite one. This is going to be kind of an old school video that I used to make on the channel. I saw a lot of y'all's feedback on some recent videos. So if that's what you want, that's what I'm going to make. But you got to do me a solid. Let me know in the comments, hit the thumbs up button if you like these creative processes videos because if you don't I'm not gonna keep making them but if you like them of course I'll make more. So this camera has 10-bit color, it has a Sony sensor, it has improved noise reduction, especially in night photography, it has portrait mode, it also has that cool glyph pattern that doubles as a selfie camera to give you kind of like a ring light effect. But the thing I'm most interested in with this camera is the 50 megapixel files that you can get at a standard focal length and an ultra wide focal length. We are gonna test both of those today and we're gonna see what that detail looks like on those high megapixel files. So yesterday I took this thing out briefly for some test photos just so I can get acquainted with the camera, but today's shoot is legitimately the first time I've ever used this. So it's also going to be kind of a test in how user-friendly a camera like this is. Let's get to it. I'll show you yesterday's footage and then meet you in the city. So for a lot of the next few locations, we're gonna cheat a little bit on our street photography and Alec is gonna be kind of like a stand-in model to make the shots more interesting. Coming in hot with that voiceover to break down these photos. So I started trying to find a composition for Alec and we wanted to use all these pillars as lead lines, but on a ground level, it didn't look exactly right. So I ran up these stairs and it turned out someone was outside the building, which is what I was hoping would happen here. And their blue shirt stood out way better against this backdrop. So I managed to get a composition that is literally perfect, the exact shot I wanted, but I wanted to get an image of Alec from another angle, utilizing the different light, and this is what we came up with. That one looks solid, but I like the street photo better. Next, we went to this MARTA train station. I had Alec go up this escalator. This composition's a little bit weird. I couldn't figure it out. I'll probably have to come back, but those lines are really cool. Lastly, we found this really interesting light against this stair set. This photo, it's kind of boring, nothing crazy, but but not terrible either. This building looks really cool. I've made a photo here before, so I wanted to get Alec walking out from under the building using the ultra wide lens to capture everything going on. Love the blue color. There's a little bit of distortion on him. And last, we went to this street photo I've tried a million times. I put him in the center of this orange ring in the shot, not bad. So far, so good with the nothing foam. This idea of faking street photography is actually a lot of fun. We've already done a few photos that I wouldn't be able to make otherwise. So now we're gonna move to the next location and see what else we can come up with. So the next shot we're trying is one that is gonna utilize the ultra wide angle on this camera. This shoots at 50 megapixels and it goes to a 0.6 zoom. So it's really wide. So this location is a lookup shot. Alec is gonna go up this parking deck and stand in the middle of one of the frames. You'll see what I'm talking about when I make the photo and I'm gonna capture it from down below using that wide angle. 
So this is an example of a photo that would never happen in real life. No one's gonna be standing up on this parking deck. So I sent Alec up two stories, had him stand in front of this light, and this photo came out really cool, but I ended up not using the wide angle feature. It was almost too wide and Alec got lost in the composition. So this is the photo we came up with at the standard focal length. I ended up trying a few other things. I tried to get a low angle here. This shot just didn't work. There wasn't enough lighting. So here's another version of the first photo. Let me know which one you like more. So we are on to the final location of the day. This isn't gonna be street photography. I actually think we've had quite a bit of success trying that. This is just gonna be more interesting locations we've never been to, testing out the camera. One of them is these new crazy buildings that they're building all over the city of Atlanta. We're also gonna to go to this plant shop that Alec told me about. I don't know, see what we can do. That is a wrap on our one hour. It ended up being like two and a half hours of photography, wrapping it up with the elixir of life, beet juice. Alec, big help today. Make sure you follow him. Let's go home and edit all this stuff. So I just finished editing everything made with the Nothing Phone and I'm very impressed by the photo capabilities of this camera. I went into this test with no real expectations. I knew nothing about this product or its camera. I just wanted to see how far I could push it and I was able to push it essentially to replicate the exact style of photos I'd make on any other camera, which is really cool. The main feature that caught my attention, it's not really even a feature, I guess, it's the fact that the 10-bit color on these edits held up extremely well. And these photos are all very colorful and they match my normal editing style that you see in other videos using other cameras. And that's not something I expected from a phone camera only shooting JPEGs. The editing capability on these JPEGs stood up to pretty harsh edits. When you zoom in on the images, there is a little bit of artifacting, which is to be expected, but when you're viewing the images on a phone or a YouTube video like this or social media where they would be posted, you wouldn't even be able to tell. And that is extremely impressive. It's rare that I'm able to replicate my editing style on a JPEG image. Now, speaking of my editing style, this is the editing formula that I used to create the edits on today's photo. It's a variation of all these, but on this photo of Alec, what I did was use my tone curve one. This is my cooler tone curve. It's a starting point I use for all my images. I used color drop, so I dropped the saturation on the colors a little bit, and I used basic adjustments too to bring some contrast into the image. If you don't have my presets and you don't know what I'm talking about, I use a formulaic system of presets so I can give y'all breakdowns of how edits are made in these videos so you can copy them at home. If you don't have those presets, you can check out my free preset. It will give you a similar result to this, not the exact same. You'll have to tweak it a little bit, but that's a great tool if you don't feel like spending money on that, which I completely understand. One last thing I did on this image was I added two graduated filters, one on the left side of the photo and I darkened the exposure and one on the right side of the photo where I raised the exposure. This allowed me to play off the natural contrast that was already happening in the image. Now, a few other photos that I wanna go through and talk about. The colors is still what blew me away. You can tell on the photo of Piedmont Park, both of those images look fantastic, especially the one of the people walking through the field. I love the wide angle shot of Alec walking out of that building. I've made that photo before and one thing that I was surprised by was how sharp this image looked, even though it was on the wide angle lens. At times, mobile photography, when you have that wide angle, has a tendency to kind of distort and mess up the clarity of the image, but the 50 megapixel files on this and whatever's going on when they're writing the files allowed for a lot of sharpness that you can see in these buildings, and I love that. Now the thing is, with this Nothing Phone camera, it does have the same quote issue that I have with all mobile photography, which is this really sharp digital look that you get with images. Some people love this. I personally don't love it, but it's something that comes with mobile photography, and you can tell with these images when you zoom in on them that they have that same 
kind of hyper realistic effect that's just a matter of personal preference some people love it some people like myself aren't a huge fan of it but it doesn't take away from the images it just is something to be aware of now one last thing that caught my attention on these edits was the camera's ability to handle highlights versus shadows this is something that is a detriment to mobile photography that I have complained about in the past is this really blown out chunky highlight look and I saw a lot less of that on these images especially the low light photos like when we had Alec in the car port whatever you want to call that parking deck there we go that's the word I needed when I have him in the parking deck there's a really smooth contrast or transition between the highlights of the lights into the shadow of the parking deck and that was something that caught me by surprise but my favorite shot on the day is the actual actual street photo that we made while we were out producing this video. Like I mentioned, I was sort of faking street photography with Alec today for the sake of example, making sure we got good shots, but the fact that this photo came together organically really sweetened the entire day of photography. And I love the composition on this image. It's exactly what I had in my head, and I love that figure that's standing out with that blue shirt against this kind of blue Huey photo. So I'm going to go ahead and rank this one a 3.9 out of 5. Extremely happy with this image and it's not one that I could replicate any day of the week. This is kind of a rare photo for me. But that's it for this day of photography using the Nothing phone. I appreciate Nothing for sending me this and sponsoring today's video. This phone is rad. It's probably one of the coolest looking phones I've ever seen and it makes amazing pictures. So if you're an Android user, highly recommend you check this thing out. And that glyphs feature on the back that lights up, I mean, how cool is that? You can customize it so when people call you, it like does different lights and things like that. It's just a conversation piece and also a great tool for photography. So that is the video. Let me know if you wanna see me make more of these long form creative process videos. I really enjoy making them, but I'm not sure if y'all do. So if you do, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. I'll catch y'all in the next one.